welcome. I'm Stephen Dickens, your host, and we're coming to you live from IBM Tech Exchange, where we're here with the 65 Media, and I'm joined by Bhargav <laughs> Balakrishnan. Why we're laughing, people, is Bhargav and I know each other, but we'll try and keep it professional, professional today. Yeah, so that's right. tell the viewers and listeners a little bit about what you do for IBM. Sure. So I, uh, over the last couple of years, I joined the power system, the power business, and I have the great pleasure of leading our product management. Uh, business for our platform, core platforms, mo application modernization, and AI for power. So I s saw you on the agenda today, keynote. Yes, yes. Look at you, all fancy. Yes. But no, seriously, keynote for the entire power track here at Tech Exchange. Tell us a little bit about what you covered yep. and what some of the key takeaways would be. Yeah, so, you know, if you go kind of look across our customer base, I would sum it up to say that most customers are asking for the same thing, different language. Every customer these days, and AI has supercharged this, they're looking to grow, save, and comply in some kind of order. I like that, and grow, all, save, and comply. Grow, save, and comply, right? And so, and as I said, AI is kind of supercharging, okay, how do I use AI to grow my business? How do I use AI to drive productivity? How do I use AI to stay in compliance? And so that kind of three-legged three stool is top of mind, and all three of those have to be at the same time. And so as we think about the power business, what we've done is really to kind of transform our portfolio and really drive focus in three very specific offering areas to help accelerate our clients' transformation needs. First, we are continuing to build and deliver differentiated platforms to go drive mission-critical workloads that our customers depend on power for. In addition, as with any infrastructure, more and more, you have to have an AI-ready component to infrastructure. That's just part of the norm right these days. So that's the first one. The second key pillar is driving modernization. So what do we what do we mean by that is helping our clients modernize their applications to drive velocity, modernizing their processes and workflows to improve productivity, infuse AI to unlock new insights. And then the third key pillar for us is all about frictionless consumption, right? It's about pay as you go, thoughtful workload placement whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on premises, but with the same user experience, without all the differences that workload placement can usually provide. So that's the business context. Now, from a keynote perspective, what do we yeah, talk about? you guys about? hit quite a big, I mean, I was checking right. through, got th sent through some details, Spire, yep. which is really fascinating. Yep. The new Power 11 processor, yep. RPG Assistant, yeah, that's right. some stuff for Power VS. Tell me more. Right. Whether you want to go that order or what just Yeah, what's... so if we go back to those, you know, building and delivering core differentiated AI-ready infrastructure, that's really where the heart of P11 processor and Spire comes into, right? So the what... interesting thing for me with Spire, yeah. obviously we saw the Z, the Z right. guys with Telem 2, yep. and they announced the Spire. I think for me the key piece is the consistency across IBM infrastructure. That, that's Can right. Can you double click there maybe for Yeah, me? 100%. I think that's also why we see a lot of value because when you think about infrastructure clients, they kind of value similar things around resiliency, availability, low latency, you know, low latency infusing generative AI into our mission transactional workflow. So when you think about the why, um, it becomes, starts to become obvious why there's a lot of synergy that Power mm -hmm. and Z and future brands, perhaps in the future, can leverage from this purpose-built off-chip accelerator. And that development effort and that sort of product management effort. Totally. And you know, probably the number one or maybe number two thing that our IBMI clients ask for is similar, right? They have decades-long worth of applications, mission critical, that are written RPG. And so what our clients are asking for is a similar type of AI-powered assistant that can help with code explanation, code transformation, code generation. And so that's what we previewed today, which is a code assistant for IBM I that we're looking to quickly uh, bring to market next year. And so basically customers can unpick and, uh, and discover that RPG code. That's right. Maybe unpack that monolith, yep. transform it. We're not talking about potentially transforming away from the platform. That's right. But moving to a more agile model. That's 100% right. So the kind of the use cases we're going after, code explanation. What is this code? Whether it's a new developer coming in, experience once leaving. So simple things like code explanation to code generation to code, you know, help me generate test scripts. It's so complex to test all these stuff, right? And the last one being, help me modernize my RPG from old to new. So there's a lot of value we see in more use cases coming. So it's 2024, I've got to ask, it's compulsory. I think they put it into my contract. Yeah. I've got to ask the AI question. Of course. You touched on it briefly earlier with that sort of 
kind of how power, power, power is playing in that ecosystem. Absolutely, yeah. What's the power AI story, especially as you're going into Power 11? We talked about Spire. Yeah. Kind of how should we contextualize that? So the way I think about it is, look, AI, AI is everywhere, and therefore, it's a pervasive thought is how we're thinking about it too, right? Now, yeah. on the, the obvious one everybody starts, and it's an important one, is look, at the end of the day, when you think about AI and scaling AI across the enterprise, right? Number of use cases, number of users per use case, quickly you start to think about performance, cost, bringing your enterprise data to bear for specific use cases, right? And so a hybrid infrastructure is going to make a lot, lot of sense to support enterprise value at scale and deploying AI at scale, right? And so we think, uh, so we are focusing a lot of our attention on developing and delivering AI ready infrastructure for specific use cases where deploying models on power um, for a use case of one, low latency, transactional workflows, a lot of those things makes a lot of sense and that's where you're going to see us continue to drive AI acceleration, whether it's off chip, on chip, the software stacks needed, et cetera. This goes back to our business and kind of the three areas of focused acceleration that we're driving. So you're going to continue to see us you know, build and deliver uh, the next system and the next innovations across the uh, the, the, a, the AI ready infrastructure. Can we expect that in 25. Uh, you know, s stay close is what I would say. But watch uh, this space for watch, more. Watch the space as we as we uh, as we continue to develop. That. I, I've got to ask. Say. It's my job to put I, you on I, the spot. I understand. So that's one piece. The second piece on the modernization side. Look, code assistant for IBM I is a big one, but that's just one of so many other workflows that we can help drive AI into, right? Yeah. And so we're thinking about a much broader AI uh, set of use cases beyond developers. How can we help the IT admins with AI ops use cases and so on? And then last but not least, it's as a service, right? How do we continue to drive usability improvements, better price performance, as well as continue to expand the solution ecosystem around our as a service portfolio for things like DR as a service, uh, OpenShift as a service, streamlining storage replication so we can truly drive that consistency our clients are, are asking for. Well, I think there's no better way to wrap. Fantastic summary there yeah. of what we can expect to see from power. You've been here with us at IBM Tech Exchange. I've been talking to Bargov about what you can expect as we look forward with IBM Power. Lots more episodes. Please click and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.